Dear students, hope you are all well. So today we will begin with a chapter in civics. The name of the chapter is Features of the Constitution. Let's move forward. The first thing we are going to learn is about the introduction. In the last two lessons, we studied how our constitution was made. We studied its preamble and understood terms like sovereign state, socialist state, secular state, democratic state and republic state. Let's move forward. The goals expressed in the preamble are the characteristic features of our constitution. And apart from this, the constitution has also other features. Let's learn them in detail in this chapter. So the first one is federalism. Now this is one of the most important feature of our constitution. That is the federal system. Now in countries with large territories and huge population, government is run by a federal system. For example, take our country, India, is with and also with large territories and huge populations. So, now why government is run by a federal system? Because ruling a large territory from a single capital is not only difficult, but may also lead to the neglect of some areas. So, people residing there cannot participate in the affairs of the government. That means what all things are going on, they cannot participate in that. So, what did the government decide? The government decided that there will be two levels in the federation. Now, why we call any country as federalism or there is federalism because in the country that means that the government in that country functions at two levels okay look at the fourth point the government functions at two levels which are the two levels the union government and the state government so what is the work of the union government union government it carries out the administration of the entire country of the whole country while the state government it looks after the administration only of a particular state now if you take our country okay our country india we have many states so each state Take out, uh, takes the administration of that, looks after the administration of that particular place. For example, government of Maharashtra looks after the administration of the state of Maharashtra. Okay, so this is a picture of a union government and this is a picture of a state government. So simple thing is to understand about federalism is that it works at two levels. What are they? the union government and the state government. Let's move forward. The next is the system of running the administration of a country cooperatively by the government at two levels making laws about different subjects is called as federation. Now you can see in the picture, the first one is about the Union government where the administration is carried out of the entire country while the state government the administration is carried out individually of different states. Let's move forward. Now let's study about the separation of powers. The constitution has divided the subject for making laws or making rules between the union government and the state government. So the constitution has divided its subjects for the union government and for the state government. Let us see which government is interested with what subjects. Now the power is also divided between these two governments. Our constitution has given three list of various subjects. Now you can see in the slide over there, these are the three list. They are the union list, the state list and the concurrent list. 
Let us learn more about these three lists. Let us move forward. The first one is the union list. It contains 97 subjects on which who makes the laws? The union government makes laws. Second one is the state list which contains 66 subjects and here the state government makes the laws. Lastly is the concurrent list. Here there are 47 subjects and are included and is made by both the government. Okay. And is made by both the government. That is the state government and the union government. Now let us take the subjects which are included in the union government or the union list. So for, first we will see the subjects included in the union list. They are defense, foreign relations, war and peace, currency and international trade. So all these subjects are under the union list. And the next is, uh, let us see the subjects included in the state list. They are agriculture, law and order, local government, health, prison and administration. So these are all the subjects included in the state list. Now let us see the subjects included in both the list, in both the union government as well as the state government. They are employment, environment, education, personal law, economic planning and social planning. So here the powers are divided into two. They are the state government and the union government. Let's move forward. Now, now we will study about the union territories. So in India, there is a union government and there are 29 states in India and nine union territories. Now the union government controls the union territories. Now let us see which are the union territories. Okay, there are nine territories. They are New Delhi, Damanandu, Puducherry, Chandigarh, Tadra Nagar Haveli, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh and Lakshwadeep. So these are all the nine union territories. Let us move forward. The next is parliamentary system of government. Now the Indian constitution has provided for a parliamentary system of the government. Now let us see under whom these all decisions are made or these powers are made. So the legislature has the highest decision making power. Now the Indian parliament includes who or which all people. So first it includes the president as you can see. Then comes the Lok Sabha or the House of the People and then comes Rajya Sabha or the Council of States. So the Council of Ministers that runs the administration emerges from the Lok Sabha and is answerable to the Lok Sabha for all its decision. Now in a parliament, you can see that's a picture of a parliament. In a parliament, democracy, the discussion and debates that take place in the parliament have significant importance. Now, you might be seeing on your television sets also putting some Lok, there are some channels related to Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. Now, on these channels, what do they show? They show discussions on different topics. When they discuss on different topics or debates are being done, they show about that. There are some channels of Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. Let us move forward. Now let us learn about Indian judiciary. The Indian constitution has created an independent judiciary. The disputes, that means the problems, the disputes that cannot be resolved mutually are referred to the judiciary. That means the problems which, are, which cannot be solved by talking to each other, where are they taken? To the court. 
if there are any fights related to the land or any other thing which is not getting solved mutually by talking to one another then they are taken to the court okay the court hears both the contesting parties look into the injustice if any and give its judgment that means this has to be done impartially there should not be any partiality the court hears both the parties what is the problem and then he gives his judgment okay then judges are appointed by the president and not by the government it is not easy to remove the judges from their office okay it's not easy to remove any judge from their work now why is it appointed by the president because the constitution has made several provisions to ensure that the judiciary remains more and more independent okay now next we will study is about the single citizenship now the indian constitution has granted a single citizenship to all indian single citizenship means there is a, a single citizenship to all the people individually okay that is also called as the indian citizenship let us move forward now let us learn more about the process of amending the constitution the word amending means changes okay there comes up a need to make changes or amendments in the provisions of the constitution now you know what's a constitution it's a book so this was when the constitution was written that means when this book was written the circumstances that means the social conditions were different and today it is different and it will change after some years so there are some changes which happen in this constitution which change after certain years amendment means changes or to change but frequent amendments of the constitution may lead to a citizen situation of instability the procedure for amendment or change is specified in the constitution itself if there are any changes to be done it is done in the constitution the procedure for the amendment in the constitution is unique that means it's different which is neither too difficult nor too easy more scope has been provided for giving more consideration and thought to important amendments then the procedure is also flexible to ensure that general amendments can be brought about easily that means in short what do you mean by this is that the constitution keeps on changing whenever it needs it will change now when it was written when the constitution was written the social conditions were different now it's different after some years it's different so it there are some changes which happen in the constitution let's move forward lastly we learn we will learn about the election commission now you must have read about the election commission in the newspaper since our country india has adopted a democratic form of government people have to elect their representatives periodically that means we elect the representatives right you know that we elect the representative for this the elections has to be conducted in a free and fair atmosphere now it's in a free and fair atmosphere that means it is your choice whom you want to vote and whom you do not want to vote there is no one who can force you by telling you you have to vote this person only only then will the citizens be able to elect a candidate of their choice so it should be in a free and fair atmosphere whichever the citizen wants to elect a representative can elect of their choice okay without any fear fear or pressure if the government were to conduct elections there might be no guarantee of such free and fair atmosphere for the elections if the government had to create then there would be they put sometimes pressure on us that we have to vote this person but it is not like that you can vote of your 
choice. Hence, the constitution has entrusted the responsibility of conducting elections to an independent machinery. Now, how do we vote through a machinery? You can see it in the picture through a machinery. You vote and then your vote goes to that person. So, this machinery is known as the Election Commission of India. Through this machine, our votes get counted and this machine is called as the Election Commission of India. Let's move forward. Next is your homework. The first question is, the first list is called the dashed list. The second one is, India has dashed states and dashed union territories. The next one is, what is federation? And the last one is, what is Indian citizenship? That's all for now. Your chapter ends over here. We will learn the next chapter in the next video. Thank you for listening children. Goodbye. Take care.